Thank you very much, Tamba. Uh, I came in late, by the way. So my first question is definitely going to be cost. Uh, what are the costs for the houses? Uh, the cost for the houses are variable. But as it is right now, the easiest way I can answer that question is this. If you still see my screen, if you go to our website, this is our website. If you go to this website, and let's say you go to uh, not designs, you go to our communities. From the communities, if you scroll down, you're going to see Kent. This is the first one we are building right now complete. If you click on Kent right here from the website, you will see that right here we have the master plan with all of the houses numbered and the plots numbered. And you can look at the model houses and the sizes for all the plots and our estimated prices that we have there right now. These are estimated starting prices for these different houses that we have modeled. Now, these models can change, these prices can change depending on when you buy because we haven't built them yet. And it depends on also your taste for luxury, what type of uh, uh, materials you want to finish, right? Some people will say, I'm okay with the China for Africa tiles. Some people will say, I want tiles that are made in Europe or made in America. The price is not, it's not the same. So we have those customization options that can make this price go up or can make it go down. But what we are providing here is using our standard materials. And for example, with tiles, our standard materials are all made in Europe, right? So we have those type of uh, standard that we've put in place. So the price varies for right now, the target is nothing more than 300,000, 300,000 or less, depending on, on what you want. I see, can you show pictures of the fully furnished house at Kent? Yes. Let's see if I can pull that up quickly. Actually, I just, uh, I just received some pictures around that. Let me see if I can show you that. And I have people at Kent right now. We're going to put a video on at some point in real time to actually show you what that house look like, right? These pictures are not very clean because the regular pictures are being uploaded. That takes time. But this is, for example, the bathroom at Kent. This is what it looks like right now. This is picture was just sent today. This is the ceiling in one of the rooms. It's wood ceiling, right? Trillion timber. This is one of the bedrooms with the bed, with the furniture inside. These furnitures were all made in Sierra Leone. This is not imported, right? This is all made in Sierra Leone. And this is inside there. This is the living room as it is right now, right? And at some point I will show you that live because we have a camera in here and I can show you live. This is the bathroom. This is one, uh, another room inside right now. This is another room. This is another view of the living room as it is right now. That's another room. This is outside the house itself. This is the front face of the house. We walk in here right now and doing the landscaping. This is another view of the kitchen, right? You can see the LG refrigerator that I was talking about right there and the appliance. So this is a cooktop with a stove that's set up here. And this is granite countertop, right? And this is another view of the front. That's another view of the front, a view of the bedroom. That's a view on the left-hand side when you are from the street, the main highway going to Kent, that's what you will see. Right, this is the back view. We are about to paint and fix the lights on the fence. These are the water tanks that I was talking about. And then the deck is up there. So this is all real. These pictures are actual pictures as of today. Questions? We open to questions. Good job, Tamba. That was a very good presentation. Of course, I'm biased, but yeah, a uh, job well done. I'm going to just show you very quickly um, in real time. I don't know, Samuel or Alassan, are you on the call?
I'm going to just share my screen from, uh, from my tablet to show you in real time what's happening at Kent right now as we are talking. So you should be seeing my screen, right? So what you are looking at, it's the camera system we have of, at Kent. I'm going to turn the video on remotely right now to just show you what the outside of the house looks like. This is real time. This is what it looks like outside right now. And this is one way we monitor the work that's going on. In addition to having a monitoring staff that monitoring the work on a daily basis, remotely, myself and our other partners, we can log in at any time to see in real time. In fact, as this is going on, if I press talk here, I can literally talk to that person that's working there, right? This is the front of the house, right? And I can go back and just show you what inside, this is the doorbell. I can show you inside the living room. Okay, let's just wait. But before that, with this security cameras in place in real time, it records when, when we are ready to, 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 to leave the site, we basically arm it. And any motion that's detected, that motion is recorded and it's stored in the cloud automatically. So this is all integrated already into the house, right? So we have a, a solar system set up and that solar system keep the lights and these cameras on 24 seven. We have a orange modem. This is actually in the living room right now as I'm talking to you. This is exactly what, what it looks like. Um, but quick points. Sam is suggesting that we uh, present the questions and answers already in the chat for those who are not checking the chat. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So, Meticulous um, Building, advertised from GMT, you can present the questions and answers already in the chat for those who are not checking the chat, okay? Let's see what questions. So let's go back to the questions here. Cannot hear. Is anyone speaking? Okay, that's the old one. Commerce Bank, Shaw Slums. Uh, what is the range of cost for houses in Kent? I think we have just answered this. Is that correct? So the range today is somewhere between the cheapest house will be the, the will be somewhere around one hundred and twenty six thousand. But that is only if you choose specifically to use some of the, uh, how you call this? I won't call, I don't want to call it inferior material, but some of the cheapest materials that we do not recommend. But for the standard materials that we recommend, uh, it's somewhere around 187 is the cheapest with our recommended materials. 187 is the cheapest. And there are different prices, as you will see, ranging from you. Okay, that's Amadou answering. I stand corrected. Some of this US also, you don't own the land, and that is not stopping investment. Well, uh, this is HDB. It, it depends, right? I think a lot of people will argue that that stops investment. And also, buying land in Sierra Leone is not very easy, especially if you're not buying it from a company. So it actually stops development. I can give you an example. We, one of our partners of this company is a US citizen and is an African-American that traces DNA to Sierra Leone. She wanted to buy property of her own. So legally what we had to do was we had to help her set up a company in Sierra Leone. She owns about 90% of the company and then TPS State owns 10% of the company. And we use that company name to basically buy the land and register the land. Otherwise, if we register that land in her name, and if somebody challenges her in court at some point, they can use those laws that I gave you, that I showed you previously to take it away from her. So outright, it's not the company that we registered that she owns 90% of that company is a Sierra Leonean citizen, but she is not. So the company can buy, but she cannot. So it's not like there are not ways to do it, you can do it. In the US it's the same, right? You can come here as a foreigner 
and register a company. And then of course, once you register a company, your company can buy. But there are laws here that will allow you as a foreigner to buy and own the property yourself. In Sierra Leone, on the other hand, you cannot. If you are a foreigner, you, you and your lawyers might be able to walk your way around to actually legally register it, right? They may not be able to know. But if somebody challenges you in court, they can take it away from you if you are not a citizen. And it, I think a precedent just occurred recently with some Lebanese guy somewhere in Sierra Leone. Samba, if I can interject quickly, I think the point HBC, H, HGP, I think that's Hamjat, is trying yeah. to make is that in the US, you don't have to necessarily own the land, but that is not stopping investments. Like you had mentioned that in the provinces, they have a separate law from, you know, Freetown. And uh, that's the point I think he was trying to make, that you oh, don't okay. own the land here when we buy homes, but that's not stopping people to invest. I see. Yeah, I, I, it's, it's a different system. Yeah, from that yeah. standpoint, yeah. In Sierra Leone, you have to own the land. If you don't own the land, it's very different. You lease it, in other words. So I see with a 55% deposit and a range of prices, is your business model targeting primarily diasporans who may want to return purchasing? Yes, correct, Samuel. Our target population is mainly diasporans who wants to purchase, return home, and live in this house, or basically use this house as an investment, right? They don't want to go through the process of trying to build a house themselves. They just want to buy it complete ready. And most important, most of us in the diaspora will want to buy a house or build a house that already has water, electricity, and all those different amenities and roads, and you don't have to suffer for any of those. So yes, that's our primary target. There are uh, high uh, net worth individuals in Sierra Leone as well that are interested these days in this type of our houses. So those are also our targets, yes. Uh, is it about are uh, the yields based on US? Yes, the yields are everything we're talking about is based on US. So if you loan us $500, we're going to be paying you back the $500 with interest in US, not in Sierra Leone loans now. So everything is US. Okay, so I see. Can you show pictures that's already answered? I assume you have solar for power. Yes. We do have solar, we do have a borehole for water. That's correct. Uh, okay, I see here that the advertised time is 1600 GMT is not accurate, I uh, think so. Thank you for that. I think we need to uh, check that. Uh, married to Sierra Leonean, naturalized as Sierra Leonean, get your company to buy the property and you must own 51%. That's correct, I think this was a, uh, Neo answering the question, I have, I've seen people do that as well. Comparative speaking, the cost of the least expensive building is much higher than Ghana and Gambia, why? Well, it is much higher than Ghana and Gambia because Ghana and Gambia, I think from an infrastructure standpoint and based on my findings, right? It's not as difficult as it is in Sierra Leone, right? Like things like getting pipe bond water, things like getting electricity to your house, it's not that expensive. Materials as well are not as expensive in Ghana and Gambia as they are in Sierra Leone. Can you show us where they rank on that scale that you uh, had shown that had Sicily's way up there and Nigeria as the lowest? I can, can go back, let me go back to that slide. Also, we see where these two countries rank. Yes, let me, let me stop sharing over here. Take it on this side. Okay. Uh, Samba, while you're looking for that, let me just ask, let me say as an investor, right? I want to invest my money, but at the same time, also, I'm looking at a certain margin, like how long it's going to take for me to maximize, get my profit, my return on investment. And looking at the price tag, I don't know the current situations in Sierra Leone. <laughs> at the same time, but also look at other competitions, like uh, looking at other developed countries, way far developed than Sierra Leone, their properties, how they are selling their properties, uh, it's much cheaper compared to the properties in Sierra Leone. And Sierra Leone is way underdeveloped at the moment. 
thinking about all of that and putting your, your investment into that. So what 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 are you gonna do in order for me as an investor to make my money? Uh, well, we if we have prices are not people are not coming in for these prices. Well, we we have different methods. Uh, one of them is selling the house is definitely our first option, right? If we are not able to sell the house, our second option is basically uh, renting. So at Kent, for example, this is part of the reason why we actually moved to Kent and started developing Kent first, because Kent have, it's a vacation location, it's a beach location, and uh, people are constantly going to Kent these days to vacation, especially during the weekends from Thursday or from Wednesday all the way to Saturday, right? If you have been to Freetown recently, you'll find out that there is a local tourism market wherein it's not just diasporans or people in the diaspora anymore. There are high net worth Sri Alineans who will go and pay $100 to $200 per night to spend a night in one of these resorts at Kent or at Banana Island or at, uh, at Number Two Beach or Tokyo. So that market is right there today. And that's also the second market that we want to take advantage of. So if the houses cannot sell at that price for whatever reason, there is the rental market that guarantees us getting money in return for the, for the investment. So when I was in Freetown in November and December, while we were building the house at Kent, some nights I wanted to sleep at Kent uh, in close to that area. I can tell you, I had to call two weeks in advance to book a spot. And I paid at uh, Mama Beach Resort, I paid about 101,200,000 per night. And there is another one called Campanero. I paid there about 1,100,000 per night for a room. And this is after booking two weeks ahead. Otherwise, there is no space. Like right now, with the independence coming, people are going to be going in these locations to spend the night, nothing. There is, no, there is not enough space to even lodge people who are just going temporarily to go back. So that's a huge market in addition to selling. So even if you buy this house for investment, you can also put it for rent on Airbnb and still make money out of this house because of the location. Okay, hold on one minute. So I see Ghana on this list, on this scale, but I don't see the Gambia. And it seems like Ghana is a little highly placed price-wise than Sierra Leone. Is that what I'm reading from the scale? And the Gambia, I cannot find. But basically from where you see that main red stripe um, to the right of that are uh, cheaper than Sierra Leone. And to the left of it, are those that are more expensive. And I see Ghana right next to Sierra Leone, but on the expensive side. <clears throat> so why is not Gambia on the list? No, I see your response too. Real estate is a lot more cheaper in the Gambia, but for some reason, they did not put Gambia. There's, Gambia, there's Gambia on, uh, uh, on sort of way left. Way and left. Says, yeah, and it says um, it's more, much more expensive than Sierra Leone. I've gone way left. I see Gabon. Gambia. It's next to Liberia. Okay. So go Ghana. Ah, go I see. Go yeah. Yes, number Kenya, 70. Ken, Ken, Kenya is also very cheaper. Kenya is very cheap. Yeah, Sorry, Kenya is very let me, cheaper. Let me, me, not, let, me give you, let me give you a highlight on how to look at these numbers also. Think about these numbers, not literal. Look down here, after the name of the country, you see something that says meter square, M, M2 square. That's very important, right? Mm. The house in Sierra Leone that cost about $20,000 is a 30 meter square house. In Ghana, however, for about the same price, the house is 305 meter square. It's way bigger than the Sierra Leone house. So mathematically, if you want to do that, do say 305, divide that by 30. That's about 10.16, right? 10.16, right? 10.16 for, 
for that same price is 20, 21,000. You divide that by 10.16, then the equivalent house in Ghana is basically co costing about $2,066 for the same size. So you have to compare them size for size. Don't just read the numbers. So it's way cheaper in Ghana. If you are comparing apples to apples, 30 square meter versus 30 square meter, it's way cheaper in Ghana compared to Sierra Leone. So okay. in essence, this chart doesn't even do justice. Exactly. If you don't know how to read, if you don't know how to read this meter squares down here, this chart is not going to tell you much. But I can tell you statistically, and after going through this math, it's high in Sierra Leone, because just look at the size of the house in Sierra Leone. It started, it's, it's around the lowest. And if you go to South Sudan, the house is 24 square meter. And if you go to Kenya, it's just 20 square meter. So while Kenya is showing cheap here, the size of the house in Kenya for that price is smaller than the size of the house in Sierra Leone. So the smallest house here is 20 square meter. That's Kenya. So, yeah, in Kenya. So in essence, you have to look at this from a square meter standpoint and not really from the cheapest, the, the square, yeah, from a square meter standpoint. I think I have that number somewhere here just to to give you comparison if i go here uh, see here Sierra Leone. so these numbers have to be converted for them to make the most sense in other words exactly exactly <laughs> so there is a square meter price somewhere i'm not sure where i put that anyway the square meter is at the bottom of the x-axis yes i had it somewhere else actually that's fine. But basically, when you read this chart, you have to read it based on the square meter. Don't just compare them direct. But Sierra Leone, we have one of the highest costs. I can tell you that. OK, there are more good questions in the chat. You want to check it out again? OK, let's go. Do you mortgage your homes? If so, what is the term limit? We don't call it a mortgage. We call it an agreement, an installment payment agreement, right? And uh, an installment payment agreement, we take 55% deposit and then the balance 45%, we require that to be paid within two years minimum and five years maximum. And depending on how long it takes you to pay that, the interest rate could be anywhere from 5% all the way to 15%, right? But our interest rate is still gonna be cheaper than the interest rate that the mortgage company or any bank in Sierra Leone will give you because of the high deposit that you already put. Do you work with local banks to provide finance? Right now, we do not work with any local bank to provide finance. We are in the process of working with UBA to provide finance, but UBA doesn't really provide finance for housing. None of the banks do. They do personal loans. So what they are going to be doing is basically, we're going to create marketing materials and go out there and say, you can take get a personal loan from UBA up to 50,000 US dollars, and you can use that personal loan to pay the deposit for this house or to help pay the deposit for this house. But it's not a traditional loan for a house or it's not a traditional mortgage. The banks in Sierra Leone are not interested in that. There is only the commerce bank that's doing that, but right now they are not doing it. And the highest they can give you is 120,000. So that's where I come in. Real estate is a lot more cheaper in Gambia. Definitely, uh, you can get a hundred thousand home in Banjo with a pool based on my niece. That might be correct. I will check. We will have to check that. It's possible that you can get a hundred thousand home, but you got to think about the size of that home, the materials used to build that home, and is that home actually a condo or a single detached house? That's also the difference, right? Countries like Ghana, countries like Gambia, their real estate markets are more matured than Sierra Leone. So they have laws that will allow you to sell a condo, basically an apartment. So you can build a story building and sell the ground floor and the top floor as different apartments. In Sierra Leone, we don't have those laws. Correct me, anyone on the call, but we don't have laws that will allow you to sell the same house, sell the ground floor to one person and sell the top floor to another person. Our land law, our laws in Sierra Leone does not allow that. Anyone on the call, correct me if that's wrong. You have to own the entire land. 
you cannot just own the property. In essence, in Sierra Leone, the property is connected, tightly connected, a coupled with the land. It's tightly coupled. So that also makes it impossible to get houses cheaper unless you build them very, very small on a very small piece of land. Then you can sell it for, for, for a little cheaper. Where will you be sharing this recorded video? We will share it mostly on our website and it will be on YouTube as well. So we'll share the link with you. You are absolutely right. Ghana is far cheaper with better quality of finishing. That's correct. Based on every houses, most of the houses we've seen, it's way cheaper in Ghana. I asked this question privately, but since it has been addressed, do you have a feel, feeling homes are way overpriced in Sierra Leone? Huh? To be frank, homes are, some homes are way overpriced in Sierra Leone, but now that I am in the market, I can tell you there is a reason for that overpricing. And the reason is because what you have to go through to legally own the land and then build on top of that land is not easy when you compare it with other countries in Africa or in the US, right? I give you an example. For every land that we own currently, we spent almost 60% of the cost of the land to legally obtain all the papers. And this 60% basically means if the land cost us $50,000, $100,000, right? If the land cost us $100,000, we end up spending $160,000. The 60,000 on top is the cost of doing the survey for the land, getting the director signature. If the land is outside the Western area, it includes paying the paramount chief to sign those documents, paying the section chiefs, paying the, 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 the local district council. It also includes paying the NRA tax, which is somewhere around 10% or more. It includes the commissions, it includes the lawyer's fee for the conveyance. When you put all of those together, it can amount up to 60% of the cost. So that alone is a big killer when you think about cost. Materials, when we started building, in, uh, in uh, November of 2020, November 2020, we started building at Kent. The cost of one, uh, not Kent, we started building at mile 36. The cost of one bag of cement was somewhere around 50, not 50, I think somewhere around 70,000, somewhere around 60 to 70,000 per one bag cement. Today, one bag cement is more than 100,000. When we were building in November 2021 and December, we bought cement up to 125,000 leons for one bag, right? So that inflation, that cost of material is significant. It's a, it increases the cost. Also, I'll give you another example, tiles, furnishing materials, right? When you buy tiles that are made in China for Africa, they cost a little bit less, right? So when we did that comparison, one box of tile was averaging somewhere around 200,000 leons, right? But these are considered cheap tiles from our standpoint, right? When we try to buy the durable tiles, the type of tiles that me and you will want to see in our house that will last longer, and most of these tiles are either made in Europe or sometimes made in Latin America, these tiles for the same type of size, right? we ended up paying somewhere around 450,000 leons for one box as opposed to 200,000. That's double the price, right? I can build with the same 200,000 tile, but if you look at the tile that costs 200,000 with the one that costs 450, I bet you will take the 450, not the 200 one. So some people who are building these houses for sale are going for standard materials. And when you put all that together, the price ends up being very, very expensive. Right, and of course, cement, high-end rods are very uh, 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 are the materials that actually increase the cost. And on our side, we don't use too much high-end rod, and we don't use too much cement. So that allows us to reduce the price a little bit. We are able to save up to thirty percent on the cost of high-end rod and the cost of cement because we don't use too much of that compared to the other people. So that's why, for the same quality or better. If you compare our houses one-on-one -on -one with the others, we will be about 30% cheaper than the others in Sierra Leone because of those extra savings.
APR is too high, yeah. More freehold, leasehold is not common. Agent fee, lawyer's fee, surveyor fee, that's correct. I am confused. <laughs> Hydroform only requires what? Uh, I see something here. Hydroform only requires this input in the making of the bricks. If so, why the cost is high? Well, uh, Mr. Kanu, the cost is high because Hydroform is not just using soil or dot, right? It uses cement as well. It goes through a manufacturing process right so you save money up to 30 percent but when you think about your foundation even if you are building with hydroform your foundation still have to be standard following standard engineering and conventional building so you're not saving any money on the foundation when you build with hydroform when you think about the roof you do not save any money on your roof when you build with hydroform if you think about your finishing your tiles for example you do not save money on the tile if you think about your kitchen, your bathrooms, you do not save any money on that. Where you save money with hydroform is the blocks that you use to put the structure up, the plastering that you will do before you paint. That's where most of the savings on hydroform is because hydroform blocks are interlocking. You don't have to put mortar between the blocks. And also if your blocks are high quality, you can build a one flat, single story or double story house without using the vertical columns with the expensive high end rods. So the house we build at Kent, for example, we only have high end rods in the foundation. We do not have any high end rods in the main structure of the building, right? Because we don't have any pillars. Everything is using the blocks and these blocks are load bearing. So right there, we save thousands of, uh, of dollars just on high end rods, right? So the high end rod savings, the savings in cement is the hydroform savings, but everything else, your tiles, your foundation, your roof, your ceiling, your windows, your doors, it's all the same. If you pick high quality windows, they're gonna cost you the same, regardless if you use hydroform or if you use a conventional building. So I hope that answers your question, uh, Fanka Kano. Yeah. Yes, thank you, Mr. Lamin. Yes, uh, it does. Thank you very much. Okay. And I see Mayombu suggests that you look at TAF Gambia for some ideas. Definitely, we've looked at TAF Gambia and we've actually, uh, actually reached out to TAF to have some discussions, right? So they have porcelain tiles, four bedroom, and suite for about 100,000. This is possible, right? We can also build this in Sierra Leone. It's possible, but you have to take into account other things when you compare Gambia with Sierra Leone. Like I said, again, the legal cost to obtain the land, your titles and all those things. And those tiles in Sierra Leone or the prices of some of these things in Sierra Leone compared to Gambia, it's not the same. So it's, it's a little difficult, let me put it that way. And also you have to think about the size of this house that they are actually selling at that price. How big is the house, right? If you say four bedrooms, what is the size of these four bedrooms? Does each bedroom take a king size? Does each bedroom take a queen size bed, right? What's the size of the house? You have to also think about that. But overall, houses are cheaper in Gambia, Ghana, Nigeria than Sierra Leone. That I can tell you for sure. If one has started construction and need your services, can you come in to complete? Well, that depends, right? We do traditional building or conventional buildings as well. We can help you to complete your house if you've already started. If anything is, the main difference is the way we work, we work by stage and we have different pricing model that's different from the conventional uh, contractors. And our pricing model is based on stage, in some cases based on material cost, in some cases it's based on the square, square meter of the space that we need to build. And for each stage, you technically need to have all of your money for all the materials and the fees ready before we can work for you because we have full-time staff. We're not, we don't have staff that we can just go call. We don't want to disappoint anyone. So that makes it a little bit, I won't say difficult, but uh, a little bit different to work with us. But yes, we do provide those services. If you're interested, reach out and I can give you more details on how we work. But you have to be ready. We do not work with anyone who is like, I'm going to buy one window today and then in one month time, I'm going to buy another window. No, we don't work. We don't work like that. If you say foundation, we have to do all the foundation work at once, 
meaning you have to have all the money for it upfront. If you say I'm going to do the main structure, you have to have all the money to put that structure, the blocks up and all the way to the roof. It has to be broken down into stages that are sensible for our, for our model to work. Is real estate comparable important in Sierra Leone? Do you have to consider the value of other homes in the area in order to buy your home? Zoning laws, wow. Yes, to some extent, but not as much as it is here. And for us, that's why we are building communities, right? The communities will make that difference, right? The houses inside the community will usually cost a little bit more than houses outside the community because houses outside the community may not have access road. They may not have electricity uh, service lines run properly. They may not have sanitation lines run properly. They may not have uh, your, the water lines run properly. But in our communities, we will have all those run properly and professionally, which means your house will always have water. It will always have electricity. It will always have good toilet system. But outside the, the community, you may not have that. If you want to have that yourself, it's going to cost you a lot of money. So yes, in that case, at our community in Kent, our houses are going to cost more than the surrounding houses just because they are inside a gated community that has all these amenities. And if you go to Freetown, main Freetown, if you go to areas like Godrich, there are some areas that are cost more than the others, right? So we don't have zoning laws, but people have created something that looks like zoning laws for themselves already just because of location. And also if the house is on the, in, in a prime spot, like a beachfront or on the main highway or center Freetown, it will cost more, way more. It might not even look as great, but it will cost more because the land in that area no. is going to cost a lot more. Uh, Tamba, uh, thank you very much. Uh, within the communities, right, uh, uh, you talk about most of the amenities, the interior, right? Uh, what are the, some of the outside amenities? For instance, I have kids. Uh, what kind of amenities do you have for, is it kid friendly? How is the social interaction will look like for your community? We do have uh, uh, What's happening here, my... We do, each of our communities definitely has, uh, how you call this? Each one of our communities definitely have a playground. I don't know if you saw the video when I started, but all of our communities have a playground. I can show you an example of what that looks like. So we wanted to make these to be living communities so as a result, we incorporated all that in. So here is uh, the master plan for Kent. You can see it has a pool and it has a playground. So if you have kids, you will have a playground for your kids and there is a pool for that as well. But this is very small. After we finish this and, uh, and, and we start doing bigger communities, then we will have uh, uh, a lot more amenities like tennis court, soccer field, basketball court might incorporate school and religious uh, houses inside if it's big like 10 acre 20 acre 30 acre type of communities but because this is small it's just this one total size here is 1.1.3 uh, acres it's not that big so uh, uh, a playground and a pool is the best we can do and there is a community house as well with a small conference room that will be available there are retail stores the front there, we have three retail stores. Those retail stores will host, will have, uh, one would be like basic groceries. The other one will be probably like a pharmacy. We're still exploring that. And the other one, because this is a beach community, it might just be general merchandise. If you want to buy something to go enjoy yourself on the beach, you might be able to get that from the other retail store. So the retail store plus the playground and the pool are the amenities we have standard in all of the communities today. Thank you. And the question here is, after paying the full 100% of house in the gated community, will the buyer still be expected to pay monthly or yearly ground cost? We call that a homeowner's association fee. So in a gated community like this one, when you come in as a buyer, you are going to be part of a homeowner's association and you together with the other homeowners are going to organize yourself and decide how you manage the community. 
And we as a company building the community, we are going to also be part of that homeowners association. So for example, the roads in the community, the water, the electricity, if we're all going to be benefiting from it, that means we're gonna continuously be paying for that, right? So we are going to agree on how much we want to be paying for that. And we're going to hire a contractor who is going to continuously provide those services for us, just like we will do in our own houses. Same thing with garbage collection. We will have to arrange all of that. So collecting the garbage, collect, making sure the roads are properly uh, clean, making sure the compounds are clean, making sure the grass are cut, making sure that the, the community lights are working. All of those things are part of the things that the homeowners association will do. And you, the owner, one or any one of the owners will be part of that homeowners association to manage the community. But your land, as you can see it as it's partition, you will own that piece of it absolutely. You will get a conveyance for your piece of plot. So the road in here, the retail store, the parking spot, the pool, the playground, and then those are rental units at the back. We, the owners of the community, are going to continue to own those properties. So we are going to be part of the homeowners association because we're going to constantly continue to manage those pieces of the of the of the community. So we're not just going to sell and leave. What's the distance from the community to the beach? The distance from the community to the beach literally is less than 500 meters, right? I can look to see if I can find a video. I have a video here to show you, but the community is right close to the beach. It's 500 meters away from the beach. It's not far. So let me see if I can play this. You can see what, what this looks like. Okay, so if you can see here the video that I'm showing right now, this was a drone video from the community, right? This is what the community looks like above, right? This is a soccer pitch that's close to the community center and you can see the water on the other side. That's the beach right there. So it's, if you are walking straight, it's like 400 meters away, 500 meters, 400 meters away from the beach. This is the Kent beach. That's what it looks like. So where are you sourcing the water from? We are sourcing the water currently from a well. So we have a well that we are using, and then we're going to also build a, a, a we're going to uh, build a borehole. So we're going to have about two to three boreholes and at least one well manually dug in that community. Right now, we just completed the, man, the well that's manually done. So this is that community, as you can see. That road, it's the road going to Kent. This is the branch road from the main peninsula highway. So the, this community, it's right on the, main, on the main road that everybody uses to go to Kent Beach. So this is basically what? So where you see that open plot, that's us building the model house. This is the model house right there. So the community faces the street. The front of the community is facing the street. So you have Tad Road coming all the way in. And the road where you see the car parking, we actually created that road, and that's going to be called TPS State Avenue. We've already acquired the name from the city council, and it's going to be labeled between now and the next two or three months. Right. So from the main highway to Kent, you will just come into TPS State Avenue, and that brings you into the community. I assume you have water treatment. Yes, we have water treatment and filtration set up, right? So the water is going to be pumped from, from the well, goes through the treatment facility, and then goes into the tank. So we are just testing that yesterday. It's 24 hours. Water will be available 24 hours. Yeah, it's going to be water in the tanks. And once the water is done, we can pump. We are exploring using iot devices to basically detect when the water is down at certain level to automatically start the pump and pump the water into the tanks because water is always going to be coming from the tanks to the house instead of from the borehole direct so from the boreholes to the tank and then from the tanks to the house you can see this is the manual where we were digging that's the first one we started digging we didn't end up getting water from that so we 
we did another one, a second one, and that second one is where we are able to get water at the moment. Okay, any other questions? So we got 1241. We will be here until 1 p.m. to continue to answer questions. So maintenance for the well is from the H, yes. Maintenance from the well is gonna be from the homeowners association, yes. And we have the option for some owners who will say, I don't wanna be part of the homeowners association. I, I wanna be part of the homeowners association, but I don't want to pay a lot. Depending on how that works, you might have your own private borehole just to your own house, or might have your own private solar just to your own house. But those are all things we are still exploring. And we're going to determine those once we sell at least 50% of the homes, because those initial homeowners are going to work with us to set those rules. We don't want to set those rules all now. So we will have centralized solar for all of the community and we will have private solar. So if you want your own private solar just for your own home, you will be able to have it just for your own home. If you want to be part of the centralized solar, you will be able to be part of the centralized solar as well. So there are going to be multiple options. So this is the construction of that house with the hydro from bricks. That's a, a, another video just to show you for. I see a question, can you partner with another private? So there is a question here that says, can we partner with another private individual? Well, it depends on what type of partnership. Yes, we are open to partnership. So as a private individual, if you want to come in to partner with us as a company, either as an investor, we can do that. If you want to partner with us to to, to sell the houses, yes, we can do that. You wanna partner with us to help you build your own house, definitely we can do that. We do not have finance to help finance your house. If you have the finance, definitely we can build for you. So we have partnerships available for companies and individuals, just come to us and let's figure out how you want us to partner. Can you talk a bit on security of life and property? That's a good question. Security of life and property. I'm not sure how to talk about that. What do you mean? Well, one thing I can say is we care about the security of the house, of the community. So that's why, number one, it's gated. Number two, the property itself is going to have a security post. So we're going to have security guards at that post, not just ordinary security. We're going to have cameras all around the compound itself. As you can see the example I showed you, that's the type of cameras we'll have, right? If somebody comes in to visit you while you are in the community, they have to be announced. They have to go through the security post. They're not just gonna come in and enter, right? So all that type of security is going to be provided. In terms of the property itself, it's gonna depend on who you are and how you wanna take it, right? Uh, you can secure your property by taking insurance, property insurance for your property. We're not going to go into that. You can do that yourself. We can work with you to do that. We are going to take insurance for the properties that we own in the community, like the retail store, the business center, and the rental unit. But each individual homeowner can take insurance for their own home itself. The house itself, when you buy it, we're going to provide the warranties that we gave that I talked about earlier. And with that, we will be able to kind of protect you just like you are protected here. Once you buy, you have some guarantee. And that's part of the ground cost. The ground cost is part here. When you buy the house, it's part of the land. You get the land as well. In Sierra Leone, you cannot buy the house without the land. 
announcement system definitely we will have that yes so everybody that comes in in fact at this model house right now we have a doorbell that's the type of doorbell that will be there right so it will be at the front of the gate and you go through the security and you get announced in what facility that can be in the estate compared to other estate that lack certain facilities that well, one of the things I can tell you is our houses are much more eco-friendly than any of the other communities that I know of in Sierra Leone today. If, for example, the sun is very hot outside, because of this hydrofoam block system that we use, when you go inside this house, it's going to be much cooler inside compared to the outside because of the hydrofoam blocks and even without AC. So when we were launching the house, one of the things that we are the popular comment from everybody that was coming was that when I enter into the house, I feel relieved. It's way more cooler inside compared to outside. Kent is a beach community. It gets very hot, right? So when you are outside during the summer or during like January, November, December, it gets very hot. When you go inside this house, it's going to be much cooler, even without the AC. And also because we're using soil and cement, which just a little bit of semen, the house overall is much healthier because breeding dot is better than breeding semen from a health standpoint, right? And then secondly, thirdly, the toilet system that we use in our community is much more efficient and sanitary compared to the others. We do not have those pits that you have to clear every five years or so. We use a biodigester toilet system. So the biodigester toilet system basically separates the water away from the hard feces and the hard feces is basically chopped off by organic enzymes that are generated in the biodigester tank and that water separated goes into a separate tank that is used to basically water the gardens that we're going to have in the community overall you will not have any smell in the toilet because of that system so the toilets are also much much more uh, sanitary from that standpoint in addition to that when you add the security that I just talked about, those security cameras, these are highly IT-based security cameras. It's not the same as the other cameras in other places because other cameras in other places are typically the CC cam CCT cameras, right? These are IP-based cameras. If you own a house here and you are in America or you are in Australia, you can still tap into your house and see what's going on in your house from any location as long as you have internet because they are going to be running on the internet. The information is going to be saved for you in your own private uh, 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 subscription for those cameras. So that's also different when you compare it with the others. When you think about fire, because we are building the community ourselves and we're doing our service line, we're going to have locations for fire hydrant. So if there is fire and fire force comes, they're gonna have a place to get water because this is a gated community. We have to provide all those facilities. That's why we also provide in road. Around the houses, we are providing enough space so you can walk 360 degree around. Inside the houses, we're going to have smoke detectors and we're going to have a, 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 how you call it, carbon monoxide detectors as well inside the house itself. So we don't have fire brigade. I don't think we have any fire brigade near Kent. I can tell you that for sure. Right. So all we're going to be doing is we're going to have fire extinguishers in the houses like this model house. We are just about to purchase those fire extinguishers and put them in. And that is also part of the reason why we avoided using gas, for example. So we are using everything we use is electric. So the stove in the kitchen is electric because, uh, yeah, while you can have electrical fire, but it's much easier to get fire from gas than electric. Right. The electrification, we trust the electrification that we've done. And with that and electric devices, we don't expect to have a, a fire. But in addition to that, if fire was to, to occur, because we're using the hydrofoam building system, these houses are actually fireproof. So if you are inside or there is fire occurring in these houses, they can keep you for up to 60 minutes based on the ratings and the standards from, South Af from the South African Housing uh, Commission. So these houses are fireproof and they are bulletproof because we use soil and that soil together with cement and water is compressed in the machine and that makes them fireproof and also bulletproof.
So you are protected and you are better off than the current concrete houses that we have, if anything. So uh, Tamba, there is no option because looking at electricity and comparing gas, for instance, like some people that does cook a lot, if you're cooking with electricity, pretty much you are gonna be consuming a lot of energy. And if you are talking about eco-friendly or whatever, and looking also about energy consumptions and the cost of electricity. So that we make that place really high in terms of living. Is there any option for like, if somebody wants uh, gas because due to cooking and some other things? If you want gas, you can put gas. We don't recommend it because we believe the electricity will be cheaper through renewable energy, right? If we, we use in solar, that's the number one we recommend. And if you don't use the solar or the solar is not enough, the backup is a generator. We tie our solar with, the, with batteries and with inverters. So what this means is that you can put your generator on and run your generator for three hours while your generator is running, cooling your, your, your stuff in the refrigerator, allowing you to cook. It's also charging the batteries. When you turn off the generator, those and that energy that's stored will continue to work, you will continue to use it. When you don't turn on the generator during the day, the solar will capture the sun, the energy from the sun and store it again in the battery. So the entire, all the houses are gonna be running technically on battery and that battery is gonna get its energy from solar or from a generator. So it's a combination of both. And all of the devices we also have Appliances that we are recommending and that we have put in this model house, all of these appliances are inverter type appliances. They use less energy. They are energy star compliance and they can work on low voltage. In terms of the bulbs, every bulb we use, it's LED. We don't use this regular type of bulb. So all of that reduces our energy consumption. I see a question. If someone have a plot of land and one hydro from interlocking building, will you do the construction? Yes, we can do construction for you. If you have your own land, if you're interested, just talk to us and we can walk through the details. In fact, we only sell blocks to people who we are doing construction for. We don't sell blocks to the general public that buy it and goes to use it now. We only manufacture blocks to build our own houses in our communities or to build houses that we have been hired to, to build. So what about propane gas for stove cooking? Is this an option to gas and electric? Yeah, this, that's an option. In fact, that's the reason why we have an outside kitchen. So for some people, they may never use their kitchen inside in Sierra Leone, right? Most of them will always use the outside kitchen and the outside kitchen would have provision to even use coal or to even use the, the, the other local methods that we use to build in Sierra Leone, uh, to cook in Sierra Leone. So we can use propane gas in the kitchen outside. The kitchen inside, if you want that, we can build it in. But so far, we've, based on recommendations, we are getting it, it, it's pushing away from it. We are thinking about incorporating the biogas, right, that we will generate. And that is going to be feeding mostly in the outside kitchens and not the inside, not the kitchen inside. So we're going to build a biogas tank and we're going to be generating cooking gas from the kitchen waste and from the toilet. And that gas will then feed back into the kitchen, but mainly the outside kitchens, not the inside, not the ones inside. That's what's in our current plan. Samuel, are you on the call? These are very good questions. Thank you all very much. We have about four more minutes to go. Any last minute questions? And as you can see, if you go to our website, you will see a lot of uh, information there. Most of our work is available also in 360. So you can actually do a virtual tour. So like for this uh, property, for this uh, Kent estate, for example, if you come here, you can actually do a virtual tour and actually explore the houses in 360. If you are like me and you are in IT and you have one of these 
uh, Oculus devices, the virtual 360 devices, you can actually go in and explore this as if you are right there. So we have all of our videos and, and, and houses in 360. So the website is on uh, tpestate.com. I'm going to share it here now. I put the website in the chat. So Samuel, are you at Kent? I can hear the wind behind. You want to share your video at Kent so we can see what's happening there? So Samuel is our chief engineer. I don't know if you have a word or two to say. He doesn't like to talk. He just wants to, to build. <laughs> uh, I have a question quickly. Why Samuel Ajos? Okay. Yes, uh, I'm trying to fix up myself. What, what timeline are we looking at in terms of the, you mentioned $500,000 somewhere in the presentation. Um, What's, what's your timeline with regard to raising that amount of money? Ah, between now and November, right? Because we want to go back in November and, uh, and basically November, December, January to continue the work that we've already started. We're completing the model house now. It's 95% complete. And then we're going to continue to raise this money until November. And then November, we're going to, we're going to continue to produce blocks between now and November and then start working on the foundations between now and November. November is when we need all of the money to basically start building all of the other structures rapidly. So our target is now from now to November. By November one, we need to raise that money. I are you are you inside the house Samuel? Yes, yes, I'm inside. Uh, Tamba, Tamba, thank you very much. I will think with you later in terms of uh, the investment, like uh, what I, what partnership and whatever. Thank you, thank you very much. And would it talk? Would it me to go talk on a corner? <laughs> no, no are, you accept, are, you, are, you, are you accepting cryptocurrency? <laughs> oh, why not? I, I can convert the crypto to US dollars, so I will take it. <laughs> I've stacked everything on Ethereum, so we'll see how that goes. Bitcoin, Ethereum, ETA, anyone you have, I can take it. Bye bye now. Okay, thank okay. you. So who wants to take a group picture before we finish? If you all want to turn your videos on, we can take a group picture quickly, just to show that you attended this and that uh, you are part of this revolution that we've started. Okay. I have this little man disturbing back here. <laughs> He's doing his own work. <laughs> He's working as well. I can see. More phases. I'm waiting for more phases to come. Some of us are shy. Let's show the shy face. <laughs> Ready? I'm about to take it. One more minute. I can't see my face. I can see yours. Oh, yeah, okay. I have let my mask on, though. It, let me pull it here. Hi, Mariama. Thank you for joining. Hey. Everybody can see their face now, right? Well, just me, anyway. As long as you can see it. I can see it. Okay, almost there. Ready? Mm -hmm. One, two, three, go. 
Okay, one more. One, two, three, two. Thank you all very much and have a nice yeah. weekend, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great presentation. Thank you. Thank you all for being with us. <laughs> <laughs> thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you from Washington. Thank you from Washington, D.C. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Kwasi. Hey, Samuel, show us your video so those who are still around can see some of the house. Yes, yes. Okay, flip, I'll do that. Flip the, flip, 